This is 105.9 The Region, where parents talk and explore practical, proactive, and evidence-based solutions. This is Where Parents Talk with Leanne Castellino. Great to have you along for this edition of Where Parents Talk here on 105.9 The Region. I'm your host, Leanne Castellino. Every week, we discuss topics of relevance to parents of teens, youth, and young adults. On the show today, we're excited to be joined by an international expert in a handful of areas that all of us can relate to in our daily lives. In fact, we'll be making time by dedicating the entire half hour to the topic of time, specifically time management, productivity, and organization. Fall is typically that time of year where a reboot takes place in many families in these areas, with work and school schedules, activities, and routines back in full force. Optimally managing our time and energy as parents to strike a balance between work, play, rest, and other priorities continues to be challenging in life today. To help us with some strategies and tips to simplify, structure, and sustain our schedules and better manage our time, we're joined by a global organization and time management consultant whose experience spans more than 30 years. She's also a mom, a coach, entrepreneur, and a New York Times bestselling author. Julie Morgenstern has published six books, and she joins us today from Connecticut. Julie, welcome to Where Parents Talk. It's great to be here with you, Leanne. I wanted to start by asking you that when we're talking about time management, where do you see families struggle most today? I think today where families really struggle is not actually talking about time (laughs) and thinking it just kind of comes naturally to everybody and that there's whatever their approach is, is the way everybody should think. Um, But, you know, every family is a group of individuals who have a complete, often have completely different relationships to time, to tasks, to work and play. And if you don't actually try to create some kind of alignment and communication around it, you end up with great chaos. And I, you know, I think of one example of a family that I was coaching and it was a, the mom had two kids, a teenage boy and a 10 year old girl. And the mom felt kind of burdened with like the, the, as so many moms do, like she was the arranger. She was the, she had to think of everything that had to be done around the house and delegate tasks and then harangue people to do it. And she hated that job of being the the pesterer. And her son, who was a teenager, uh, was, he was, his, his job was vacuuming and he was happy to vacuum, but the mom was always frustrated. Like what, you know, he wasn't getting it done when she, she was like, why is it not done? Why is it not done? He's like, what do you mean? Why is it not done? And he, we had a a meeting and we talked about it and the arrangement was the agreement was it would be done on Saturday. He would vacuum every Saturday, but they never talked about by what time. Mm -hmm. So the boy had just thought, as long as it's done by like dinner on, on dinner time, I've done it on Saturday. The mom in her mind was like Saturday morning, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. I want the vacuuming done, but they never talked about it. So that was just miscommunication. I think that's the mistake that parents and families have around time management is not having these kinds of conversations to make the invisible assumptions and styles and expectations visible and then straightening it out. That is such an interesting point with that story that you just shared. And I can absolutely 200% relate to that because, you know, the sense of urgency that a parent feels around when things needs to get done is not necessarily that of their child uh, and especially teenagers in, in many respects. So how should we be discussing time then to that point in our families? To get in the habit of talking about not just what needs to happen, but also when, just add the when to the conversation. And by the way, we should do this for ourselves as well, right? How often do you make a to-do list that is like, what do I need to do? I need to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, E, F, G. 
But if we don't ask of ourselves, and when am I going to do it? It just stays on our to-do list. So make one of, one of the habits of the household is that whenever there's any asking of favors or assigning of tasks or requests, when we ask things of each other, don't just ask for the what, also talk about the when. That's like really simple. It's really, really concrete. And if that becomes part of the way you speak to each other, you'll always align on expectations or have a chance to reveal that, wow, we, I'm happy to do it, but I can't do it at the time that you want. Um, can we negotiate that? Yes. And then it becomes a very explicit conversation, right? Everybody's on the same page. Uh, when it comes to, to teens, young adults, and, you know, going off to college and university um, in particular, time management takes on a whole different realm. Um, what can parents do to support that, you know, change for these, for these young adults as they move on? So you have to kind of recognize whether you are sending an organized kid off to college or a disorganized kid off to college. Recognize the transition is huge to go from high school where your day, your kid, is structured for you, right? There's a start time and an end time to every single day. And even if your after school stuff is a little bit variable, by and large, there's a very predictable schedule. The biggest change, one of the biggest changes that takes place when you go to college is that every day really looks different, right? You can have a day where you have three classes back to back, and then you can have a day where you only have one class it's the variables are a shock to the system. So if what you could do is talk with your kid about that. And if, you know, we do things like time mapping, right? Like, which is you recognize that your, your, your week is a container. It's got 168 hours in it, right? Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 168 hours. And if you take a top-down view, even though each day may look different, the ingredients of your days remain the same. Every day you need to do some schoolwork, you need classwork, you need homework, you need to eat, and you need your chill time or your social time. And if you teach your kid that the way those ingredients fit into your day may vary, but all of those ingredients belong in every single day. So they can start mapping it out. When do I sleep? Get your sleep schedule like really clear. Then every day, when are my classes? That's in class time. Every day, when is my homework time? Then you lay into the week. Then when is my you know, meal time? When is my chill out time or my social time? And just teach your kids to use this like uh, blocks that you have to fit into a week and and they arrange differently every day, but it's the same, same set. That's a really powerful tool for kids. Otherwise, they don't know. It's just like, well, I don't have any classes today. So I guess this can be like a day off. Or oh, I suppose I'm supposed to be studying all day. And I really wish I had time for my friends. So teach them balance in that way. Start thinking about that. And they should have tools to do that, a, a grid a schedule like 168 hours in the week schedule and they can fill it out every, you know, for the semester uh, based on when their classes are. Um, and a planner is really helpful, calendar. So give them tools to help them track and record that time, super helpful. Essential, absolutely, because really these days it's a life skill that only continues to sort of grow as they develop, you know, their careers and into their jobs, et cetera, et cetera. You are listening to Where Parents Talk on 105.9 The Region. We're talking about tips and tricks to get a better handle on schedules, organization and time management inside and outside the home. Best-selling author and global expert in time management, Julie Morgenstern, is our guest. Julie, I wanted to pick up on a couple of points that you made there. You talked about to-do lists. So much of your work over all these years has really uh, been around coming up with systems 
and, and strategies and actionable tools and tips that people can use to really sort through, you know, which often is the chaos of their lives. Could you give us some of your favorite tips in terms of um, organizational skills? If I were to pick my like that, what I think are the top three unlocks that are like most universally empower people when they feel their lives are really feeling chaotic um, and they feel out of sorts. Number one, have a single consistent place where you record everything you need to do. I highly recommend that is tied to your calendar. Connect your to-dos to your calendar. Wherever you keep your calendar, integrate your to-dos because a to-do, kind of what I referred to before, a to-do that's not connected to a when rarely gets done. So if you have your to-do system scattered among five or eight different places, it's on your iPhone notes page, it's on post-its, it's on to-do lists, it's on documents on your computer, it's in your head. First and foremost, select one single tool, one, because I'd say 30 to 40% of the time and energy that's wasted in a day will go to just being worried about you're not present in anything you're doing because like whatever I'm doing, what am I forgetting? Or you're spending so much time sorting through your to-do list, you're not spending much time getting anything done. So pick one tool. That's tip number one. I, it just makes, it will calm you down and put you in control very rapidly. And you'll still have more to do than time to do it. It's not gonna take that problem away, but at least you see it all in one place and it positions you to make the best decisions of what's most important out of everything I need to do. You can make better prioritization decisions if it's all in one place. So that's tip one. I would say tip number two, that's a game changer for most people, have a sacred time toward the end of every day. It could be the end of your work day. It could be the end of your day day, like your evening after dinner. 15 minutes where you look ahead at your next day plus two. I call it planning tomorrow plus two. And you don't and you look at what's on your calendar, what appointments do you have? Are you working? Do you have time off? What, you know, what's happening with the kids? And what, what's the flow of day for tomorrow plus two days beyond that? Always a three-day arc because that helps us when things don't go as planned. We kind of have a three-day context to rearrange with priorities within and sort of reorganize ourselves. What's on my plate? What's, what do I need to get ready? Oh, the kids have this thing on Thursday. What does that mean? Who do I need to delegate to? And you just organize yourself always in advance. What's coming up is one question you ask. What do I need to prepare or do to make sure that goes smoothly is the second question. And the third question you ask in this plan tomorrow plus two is what could go wrong? What could, what could go wrong here? You know, what could get, what could derail me or what could derail us? And when you think about that in advance, you can then kind of preemptively strike on many things. We are going to continue our conversation with Julie Morgan Stern. When we come back, we're going to talk about her book, A Time to Parent. Stay with us. You're listening to Where Parents Talk on 1059 The Region. Want to learn more about the show? Email info at whereparentstalk.com. Stick around. Leanne Castellino and Where Parents Talk will be right back on 1059 The Region. Welcome back to Where Parents Talk. Listen live at 1059theregion.com. Here's Leanne Castellino. Welcome back. Our giveaway this week comes courtesy of Julie Morgenstern. It's a copy of her book, Time to Parent. We'll be talking about some of those strategies, including the book. And to win a copy of Julie's book, simply go to whereparentstalk.com, click on the giveaways page and follow the prompts. You can also connect with us about the giveaway on any of our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn. 
Julie, before the break, we were talking about your top time management tips and specifically trying to predict and prepare for pitfalls that may arise. The truth is we can anticipate probably 80% of the surprises in our days, in our families. Our kid is forgetful, so they always leave the house without their backpack or they always, you know, we know our, we know ourselves and we know our folks. You can predict them if you actually stop to think about it. But if we don't take the time to think about it, then we're always caught by surprise. Third tip on on time management, make it a habit to ask not just what I need to do, but how long is that going to take? And uh, when when am I going to do it? And if, if you realize when you start estimating how long things will take and you get really accurate in those estimates, you'll become a better delegator. I think that that, and you'll also learn to say no. And I think those are two things that parents really need is perspective on not overloading, overloading their plates because they think they can do it all or they think they should do it all. And like parents just want to do great. And there's so much flying at them. You don't even know how much is flying at you because you're dealing with a family. Kids have surprises they bring every day. You have surprises every day. If you have a spouse, they're bringing surprises. The more you contain that chaos by like being really realistic with how long things take and then just try to like get everything as auto, all the predictable stuff as automated and simple as possible, it leaves room for the surprises. Julie, let's dig into your sixth book for a little bit, Time to Parent. It was born uh, in large part out of your own experience as a mom. Tell us why you wanted to write this book. When my daughter was born, I was like, where's the time management manuals being pamphlets being handed out in the maternity ward? Like, (laughs) how am I supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. How am I now supposed to like divide my time? It wasn't like I wasn't really busy before I had a child. It wasn't like I was twiddling my thumbs. I was like, where's the time management manual? And I really craved it as a parent. I wanted to know, like, how am I supposed to allocate my time between work, self, this child, with this child? How much time am I supposed to spend just sort of playing versus like teaching her versus whatever? I, and I always craved it, right? Then I, I had become a time management uh, and organizing consultant coach and practitioner when my daughter was three, I got divorced and I could no longer afford to be in the theater either for the theater money or the theater hours. So I started this business on organizing business. And I found over the years, two things to be true. One, 80% of my clients were parents. Not that I was targeting them, but it was like the parenting years are the most time stretched years of a human's life. Every parent and globally, because I traveled around the world, I mean, every country, every culture, men and women, all were asking the same question, which is, how am I supposed to divide my time here? How much do I work? How, you know, and they just felt guilty because they didn't know the answer. And I thought, why is there no manual for parents on time management, on how you're supposed to allocate your time? When my daughter graduated high school and, you know, went off to college, I finally had the space and the time myself to like study this topic and and try to find, find the answer and create the manual. And that's why I did it. It, There must've just been aha moments all over the place for you. Let's dig into some of the top tips and strategies that you share in that book. What are some of the the more memorable ones in terms of the systems uh, and tips that you share? So I wanted to define the juggling act. What really is it that we're juggling our time between and to distill it down like a job description into like some buckets so the first thing is after a lot of thought research, I was, and, and synthesis, I, I was like, look, this job is not juggling a million things. It's actually juggling eight things that cover everything you need to do for the full span of the parenting years. So here's a way to think about the job. First, you break the job into two parts, raising a human and being a human. And then each of those two 
have four components. So to raise a happy, healthy human, we have to balance our time as parents between four core activities. They spell the acronym PART, as in doing your part for another person. So P, we have to provide for our kids, which involves working and making and managing money. A is we have to arrange the logistics of our kids' lives. We have to do all the cooking, cleaning, planning, shopping, school decisions, all that stuff, transportation. That takes time. R is we have to relate to our kids. We have to spend one-on-one time with them, getting to know them for the unique individuals they are. It's what a lot of people call quality time, but it's really relating to understand this unique individual before us and love them and support them and understand them. And then T is for teach. We have to teach our kids life skills and values so that they can succeed in the world. P-A-R-T, doing your part, provide, arrange, relate, teach. As adults, we're responsible for our children's well-being, but we are also responsible for our own well-being. And too often parents put all their energy into the raising and they completely abandon themselves. So to be a happy, healthy human, we also have to juggle our time between four activities. Think of the word as self, sleep, right? Self. We have to sleep. We have to get our rest. It is essential. You have to become a sleep ninja as a parent, not a sleep sacrificer, a sleep ninja. Number one thing to fit, figure out how to be good at because it's the only way you're going to be able to think clearly and have the energy to do your part on the other side. It's so demanding. E is for exercise. We have to move, whether formally or otherwise, so we feel fit and we have energy and we have confidence to like get out there and like run around with our kids. Even if our kids are teenagers, we still have to run around with them and really have the energy to be present and feel confident in ourselves. We have to spend time on love. That's the L, our adult love relationships, our friendships, so that we feel nurtured. Is how do you nurture anybody if you're not also getting nurtured? And then F is for fun. And that is, listen, we can have fun on anything that we do. Honestly, we get fun at work. We get fun relating to our kids. We get fun on all of it. But when I'm talking about fun from a, a really being a fulfilled human, I'm talking about the hobbies or passions that each of us have, that when we do them, we feel like us. It's like your happy place. Some people it's drawing, some people is listening to music, some people is some act of pure relaxation. And parents usually think they get back to that after their kids go off to college. If you can build in small doses of that thing that just makes you feel like you into every day and or every week, it grounds you in the most powerful and effective way that gives you all of like the strength and perspective. That is a great way to compartmentalize and it's it's something that's easy to remember, but it's also prioritizing those priorities, right? Because I think that's where a lot of us, regardless of age and specifically parents, get really tangled up and that's where it turns into chaos a lot of the times is not being able to understand prioritizing the priorities. Yes. And, and by, by naming them, right, it makes it a lot easier for you as a parent to quickly inventory on any given day, on any given week, at any given moment, how am I doing on these eight things? What is taking up most of the time? What is getting neglected? And then you can course correct. I think what, if, when you don't have the definition It just feels that whatever you're doing, you vaguely think you should be doing something else. (laughs) But by knowing the game board, it's these eight things. And the key is you don't have to spend equal amounts of time on each thing. Some like sleep should be seven to nine hours a night. You don't need to spend seven to nine hours exercising, right? You don't need to spend seven to nine hours teaching. Work could take, you know, nine, nine hours a day. So It's not equal amounts of time. Every one of these need to be touched. And if they are not done as part of your regular time diet, basically, you will feel off balance. 
when you are making sure that all eight quadrants are getting some love, some attention, some time, you feel whole. When anything is getting neglected, you feel off balance. So it's a, it's a rudder. It's like a control panel. So you can just keep monitoring yourself and then course correct as you go and feel not bad about the self time. I think parents feel so guilty about self care. When you realize it is, I mean, it's how you're able to do your part. It's how you role model for your kids what it means to be a happy, fulfilled adult, then you don't feel guilty. You feel it's your duty to take care of yourself. You feel it can be your joy. You can enjoy it. Anyone who's read the book or been to a talk, they're usually like, oh my God, A, I can do this because it's not a million things. It's eight. And B, I needed this permission to take care of myself. I need the permission. And this framework gives you permission. There's so much food for thought in everything that you've shared with us today, Julie. I'm afraid we're out of time (laughs) on just a a (laughs) massive topic that we could continue to talk about. Um, And we'll have much more with Julie Morgenstern, including a video interview on whereparentstalk.com. So please be sure to check that out. Julie Morgenstern, international expert in time management, organization, and productivity. Thank you so much for your keen perspective and insight today. Thanks, Leanne, for your great questions, inviting me back, and always happy to come and talk to you. Remember, as well, this week's giveaway is a copy of Julie's book, Time to Parent. Go to the giveaways page on whereparentstalk.com to learn more. If you missed any part of today's show, you can always listen to the podcast on 1059theregion.com or whereparentstalk.com. Also, we love hearing from you, so tell us what you think about today's topic or anything we discuss on the show through our social media channels. That's Where Parents Talk for this week. I'm Leanne Castellino. Thanks for joining us. Happy parenting. Sign up for Leanne's parenting newsletter and so much more at whereparentstalk.com. This is Where Parents Talk on 105.9 The Region.